Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you back to another record of the series. We discuss, break down, and recap the day of baseball. Today, we're going to be recapping game number two on the American League side, the Tigers and the Guardians and the Yankees and the Kansas City Royals. I just finished watching the Yankees versus the Royals game. And let's start this recap off by uh, discussing and breaking down the Detroit Tigers and the Cleveland Guardians. This is a really entertaining game. Both games uh, today were entertaining. Really, this entire playoffs have been absolutely bonkers. Some incredible moments. Um, and this was really a pitching duel uh, between Tariq Skubal and Matthew Boyd on the on the Cleveland Guardians side. Tariq Skubal uh, set the tone in the first inning. Absolutely dominated. His fastball usage in the first couple of innings was at least like 60-70%. He was really primarily fastball, fastball, fastball. The Cleveland Guardians could not catch up. Therese Gubel's final stat line, seven innings, three hits, eight strikeouts, no walks. One of the most dominant pitchers that this game uh, has seen in the past couple of years. Tariq Skubel is, is a bright star, and he's been so big for the Detroit Tigers. Um, so, again, this is a pitching duel. Matthew Boyd pitching pretty well on, on the Cleveland Guardian side. We take it to the top of the fourth inning, and with a runner at third base, some real trouble – for Matthew Boyd and facing Parker Meadows and Jake Rogers. He is going to strike them out to get out of this jam. Parker Meadows on a low and away slider, lefty lefty matchup. And then Jake Rogers, he caves them on the fastball. After this moment, I'm like, Matthew Boyd is really here. A hype moment. Cleveland's into it. Matthew Boyd really setting the tone for the Cleveland Guardians uh, after Tariq Skubal on the Detroit Tigers side really set the tone for the, uh, the Tigers side of things. So we take it to the bottom of the fifth inning. Tariq Skubal is going to be facing Josh Naylor. Josh Naylor works a really, really good at that. He's going to end up fouling two pitches off um, while forcing a breaking pitch. Really with Tariq Skubal, this is the first at bat in the fifth inning where I felt like Naylor, I, there was one pitch I saw Naylor. He was uh, uh, in the first couple pitches, he was late on the fastball. And then later in the at-bat, I saw him really start to sit fastball. You could tell he was out in front, fouled off a of fastball. Tariq Skubal recognized it. He ends up going, I think, changeup. He ends up going slider. And, and Josh Naylor fouls off both of those pitches. Now Tariq Skubal, forced to go back to a fastball, leaves it middle at Josh Naylor, crushes it into right center field for a double. A really great at-bat by Josh Naylor. Uh, definitely the best at-bat to that point in this game. And then... Scoobs is going to hit John Kenzie Noel. I think in the fingertips looks like it really hurt John Kenzie Noel, uh, but he's going to end up staying in the game. So now we got first and second uh, with one away, and we're going to see a first pitch double play for Andres Jimenez. That that's the type of thing. It happened twice in this game. A big time double play for the Detroit Tigers. Like the tie, the, the Guardians putting something together. Uh, hitting Tariq Skubal. And the first pitch, I think it was a sinker to Jimenez. He rolls over in a, a routine double play for Andy Abanez, Trey Sweeney, uh, over to Spencer Torkelson. Really big for Tariq Skubal. Really exciting. He was talking to the crowd like, let's go. I want this. A big game moment for Tariq Skubal. So we take it to the bottom of the sixth inning. And once again, the Cleveland Guardians put together a rally. Brian Rocchio this time aligns a double down the left field line. And then we're going to see Steven Kwan put up such a good at-bat versus Tariq Skubal. Again, he's really pounding the fastball this entire game. And, and, and Steven Kwan gets a fastball out the outer upper half, and he's going to get a half-check swing through the left side. The, the Tigers uh, shifting Steven Kwan, so there's a large hole in that shortstop area. And Steven Kwan half-swing is going to poke it into left field to set up first and third with one out. And then we're going to see David Fry round into a double play. Trey Sweeney had to go in on this ball. Really good play. Kind of a chopper, a high chopper. Gets it. Quick turn to Colt Keith. Colt Keith, really good turn just to get David Fry at first base to save a run from coming home. Tariq Skubal, back-to-back, massive double plays turned by the Detroit Tigers defense. Trey Sweeney has been really, really good at shortstop for the uh, – Cleveland are for the Detroit Tigers. Quick pit stop. I just want to say hi to my, my man Tyler over here. Tyler, uh, he hits bombs, as you can see, sitting with the bat. Hopefully you can – wait, can you actually even see Tyler? I'm hoping – yeah, you can see Tyler. You can see Tyler in the footage. Yeah, Tyler hits bombs. You can see he's he's getting ready. Um, but also leave a like if you made it this far and subscribe. I, I've never actually – I've never done that, like, ever in a video, just where 
I, I say like and subscribe, but we take it to the top of the seventh inning, the Detroit Tigers, a uh, Parker Meadows. I think this is when uh, the guard, yeah, the guardians are in their bullpen at this point. Uh, I, I don't know if this is Hunter Gaddis uh, who was in this game. It might've been Hunter Gaddis. I think he was sitting fastball Parker Meadows or no, it was a lefty lefty matchup. It was against Tim Heron uh, for the Cleveland guardians bullpen. Parker Meadows, so close to hitting another go-ahead solo shot, I think in the seventh inning as well, which he did against the Houston Nationals to take the lead. Uh, I think it was in game number two. Parker Meadows, uh, really, it looked like he got this ball. It, I mean, the the right fielder, I, it might have been John, it might have been Will Brennan or John Kenzie Noel, whoever. I think they they put Will Brennan later in this game, but they went back on it, and you could tell they were right on the track, and then the wind pushed this ball back the the, le- the right fielder ended up coming in on it, and Parker Meadows just missed one. It was a fastball, I think, in her half. Uh, Parker Meadows, a left-on-left matchup. We saw him really struggle in that first at-bat versus uh, Matthew Boyd on that slider away, but when he got a fastball middle, uh, he was able to put a really good swing on it. Parker Meadows had a really good day, uh, ended up making a really good play in center field as well. I really love Parker Meadows' entire game. So the top of the eighth inning, Matt Vierling versus Hunter Gaddis. He is going to uh, line a double. I think it's a left field. And, and he's going to be standing at second base and put in Emmanuel Classe with a runner at second base. Uh, with Riley Green coming up, they're going to walk Riley Green, set up the number five hitter, Juan Seal Perez. And Emmanuel Classe entering this game. I mean, of course, a very high leverage scenario here is 0 0 game. Juan Seal Perez is going to put a really good swing out of cutter, barrel it up, send it into left field. And Stephen Kwan in left field is going to make an incredible game saving catch for the Guardians. This would have definitely scored Matt Vierling, potentially would have scored Riley Green with his speed. And if it got by Stephen Kwan, depending on. Uh, the trajectory of the ball after it hit his glove. But what a play by Stephen Kwan. This ball, I mean, really, like like not a lot of left fielders make this play. A really risky play by Stephen Kwan to fully go all out to get this ball. And you could tell in the replay, it was a very close replay. I initially thought it had a chance to drop. Um, I, I, I thought initially in the first replay, I'm like, that ball actually looked like it hit the ground, but it hit his leather uh, on the ground. It was really like his glove got kind of caught in the grass. And, and they 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 review it. Stephen Kwan, the catch stands. The Cleveland Guardians get out of that inning and force it to the bottom of the eighth inning. And in the bottom of the eighth inning, I, I forgot who it was. It might have been Lane Thomas who drove a ball uh, into center field. And Parker Meadows with an electric catch in center field. Six foot five athletic center fielder. And he really mounts the center field left field wall in Cleveland to make a really, really great play after that Stephen Kwan play. So let's hop into the studio and break down this top of the ninth inning for the Detroit Tigers versus Emmanuel Classe. Welcome into the studio. Let's hop straight into the breakdown. Spencer Torkson leading things off here in the top of the ninth inning. Emmanuel Classe is going to start him off with a slider low and away. Will Brennan and Bo Naylor coming in uh, for defensive purposes for the Cleveland Guardians here. And Classe... Came in in the eighth inning, got the final out, and tried to hold this lead here at zero apiece, taking it into the bottom of the ninth inning. Right there, 1-0 is going to go with the cutter low in the strike zone, not get the call. This umpire, we're going to see right here, 2-0, same pitch. That pitch is called for a strike. Strike Spencer Torkelson immediately tell the umpire, that's the same pitch. Why are you calling that a strike? You just called that a ball. But this umpire was really all over the place in the bottom of the ninth inning. Bo Brisky. Uh, got multiple low strike calls. This umpire had a pretty wide zone, so surprised that Class A didn't get that first call. So now we got 2-1. Class A is going to go to another slider right there, middle-middle. And you can see Storkelson with that check swing kind of catches, not even a full check swing, catches it on the back of the barrel. And, and Torkelson, uh, after that swing, I'm probably going back to another slider. I don't like uh, I, I don't. I think Torkelson's most likely sitting cutter uh, after he's very uncomfortable on that slider. But Class A, he trusts his 100 mile an hour cutter, and for good reason. Middle, middle. Torkelson, a pretty good swing on that cutter right there. Class A again, two two ops to go to another cutter right there, really well located. Torkelson, uh, even though again, I think he's sitting cutter right here, two two. Um, he he can't do anything with that pitch if he hypothetically gets the barrel to it. Uh, I mean, I mean, not not like if he just gets his bat to it. It's probably going to be a broken bat, 
So uh, class A, really, really well located, 99 uh, mile an hour cutter. 2-2, two, two, we go to a slider, really nothing Torkelson can do. That's a really, really well located slider, low to Ditch. He's had some big hits for the Tigers in this postseason. Right there, a missed cutter upstairs. So 1-1, one, one, we've seen cutter, we've seen cutter. Goes back to another cutter up and inside. And that is going to be a fly ball to Josh Taylor. So now we got two away. Jake Rogers coming up to the plate. The number eight hitter for the Detroit Tigers. And Jake Rogers is not a good playoff run, but Jake Rogers is not a dangerous hitter. Let's continue to pound the strike zone. 99 mile an hour cutter. 100 right down Broadway. And Jake Rogers is going to be sitting cutter and line that into left field. A really good effort by Brian Rocchio. You can see, really goes all out. He's super mad right here, but he's unable to get that ball. He actually had it, honestly, distance-wise. If his glove was a little more down, he's actually going to have gotten that. But Jake Rogers, after seeing... Uh, the previous at bats, I'm sitting fast, I'm sitting cutter, middle, middle, and he gets one and he puts a really good swing on it, catches that cutter out in front and pulls it into left field. So now we got a base runner finally versus Emmanuel Class A. That's the first step here. Now you got Trey Sweeney up to the dish. First pitch cutter upstairs. You can see him kind of uh, want to swing, but hold his swing back after recognizing that pitch is upstairs. 1 0, cutter inside. Trey Sweeney gets the hands in a really, really good swing right there. And Jake Rogers is going to move over to third base. And Trey Sweeney standing at first base with a big two out knock. A really good swing right there from Trey Sweeney, man. Really, really, really good swing. Again, Class A, it's been cutter, it's been cutter, it's been cutter, it's been cutter. And, and the Tigers, you could tell, they're sitting cutter. They're sitting cutter, and, and that's a, a well located cutter, but a Really, really good swing right there from Trey Sweeney. Trey Sweeney's impressed me. Defensively, he's been exceptional. And, and with the plate, uh, he's he's struggled. But, he, that, I mean, that's a really clutch at bat and a really good approach right there. So now we have Kerry Carpenter up to the plate who pinch hit for Justin Henry Malloy. My, my, cat, is, <laughs> my cat is biting the microphone right now. Uh, Kerry Carpenter pinch hit for Justin Henry Malloy, who was initially the leadoff hitter. Uh, facing the left-handed Matthew Boyd. They put Kerry Carpenter in in the seventh inning for a pinch hit opportunity. I think we take it back to the fifth inning. I'm not sure if I talked about it when I was doing this recap, but Kerry Carpenter, there was an opportunity to potentially pinch hit him with Matthew Boyd coming out of the game, but Stephen Vogt, knowing that Kerry Carpenter is coming off the bench, he put in Tim Heron, his lefty, to face Justin Henry Malloy to keep Kerry Carpenter on the bench. They end up not pinch hitting him. He comes in in the seventh inning later. So this is the second at-bat of the game, but it's the biggest at-bat of the game here in a big situation versus Emmanuel Classe, exactly what the Detroit Tigers and A.J. Hinch want. So first pitch cutter, misses up and away. Classe, 1-0. Another cutter. It's been all cutters. Last six or seven pitches, it's been cutter, 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 2-0. Where is he going to go? He's going to go to another 101 mile hour cutter. Low and away. I mean, that's, the, again, a pitch like even the one to Trey Sweeney. That's a pitch that he can't do much with right there. That's a, a pitch that Carpenter really can't do much with. That's a very difficult pitch to potentially drive. 2-1. Is he going back to another cutter? Let's sit cutter, carry Carpenter, and adjust to the slider. 2-1. Nasty slider. Absolutely nasty slider. I think Kerry Carpenter is sitting cutter, but you can't even tell. That's just a pitch. He's way under that pitch. Way under that pitch. Also, you could tell Carpenter's trying to really drive it. He's trying to hit a bomb right here. He's trying to take a 3 nothing lead. That's a really big hack right there. So now 2-2. Two, two. Cleveland's into it. Woo! Let's go, Kerry! Class A. 2-2. Two, two. Where are we going? Are we going back to a cutter? We're going middle, middle slider. 94 miles an hour. Carpenter, you could tell, sitting cutter right there. He's a little bit over that pitch. I don't know, actually, I would take that back. I don't know if he's sitting cutter right there, but he is, actually, I, I disagree. I don't know why I said that. I don't think he's sitting cutter at all right here, but he's a rolling over on that slider, not recognizing the movement. That's got really good movement, especially, again, compared to that, that cutter. So now, 2-2, two, two. Emmanuel Classe. He's going to go back to another slider. Same location in Kerry Carpenter's happy zone. And he comes through with a magical three-run home run. I cannot believe when I watched this live that Kerry Carpenter actually just did that. 110 off the bat, 423, 
Carpenter off of Emmanuel Class A, the Detroit Tigers. That's my motherfucker right there. That's my motherfucker right there. That's what Will Vest was saying. Come on, man. What a, what a swing. What a sequence of events. A two-out rally the Detroit Tigers just put up, getting shut down by a Matthew Boyd in the Cleveland Guardians bullpen this entire game. And, and Emmanuel Class A comes in. It gets the first two outs, Jake Rogers single, Trey Sweeney jam shot single, and then Gary Carpenter in two-strike count is going to bomb one into right field. Are we serious right now? The MLB playoffs, this, this, this 2024 season has been incredible. The playoffs so far have been magical. So many incredible moments like this. And Gary Carpenter comes through the Detroit Tigers. They end up winning 3 to nothing. Bo Brisky closes it down. And, and a really massive game. The Tigers are, are a special team. This is going to be a really fun series. Each and every single series that we're seeing right now on both sides of the American League and National League are so good. Let's go recap the Yankees and the Royals game that we saw today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that breakdown. Now let's talk about the Kansas City Royals and the New York Yankees game number two. Yankees win game number one. Back and forth game. Five lead changes in this game. A clutch hitting from Alex Verdugo and some incredible a closing by Luke Weaver and the Yankees secure a seven to six game number one win. Also, Glaber Torres, a big part of that game number one. So, Carlos Rodon versus Cole Reagans with two of the best and most electric lefty arms that this game has to offer. So, this first inning was really impressive from both pitchers in different ways. Carlos Rodon in the top of the first inning absolutely set the tone. Strikes out the side, Michael Garcia, Bobby Witt Jr., and Vinny Pasquantino. And this, this man, this man was hype. Immediately, Michael Garcia struck out. You could see him laughing, like, yeah, like he's talking to himself. Bobby Witt Jr., he strikes it out. You can see him smile again. Vinny Pasquantino gets him to chase on a slider, and he is just joker laughing. Ha 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 off the mat. Like th th this motherfucker's a dog. Absolute dog, man. He's ready for I think his first career playoff star, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't actually check. I'm assuming, though, because what was he? What did he come up in, like, 2018, 19 with the White Sox? And I, I'm not sure if he was healthy uh, during that 21 run. If I'm not mistaken, it might have been – he might have had a, a, a playoff appearance, playoff start during that run. But uh, what his first playoff start with the New York Yankees and in the past couple seasons, and, and, and Carlos Rodon is ready to elevate his game, being the dog that he is. Uh, with the stuff, his command was really dialed in that first inning. Uh, we take it to the bottom of the first inning, and Glaber uh, and Juan Soto work two back-to-back -back walks to set up Aaron Judge right here. The after Rodon's inning, Glaber Torres locked in. Juan Soto really good at bat versus Cole Reagans, and, and I think Judge got ahead too. Well, you're like the Yankees really like this could be it. Let's set the tone here in the first inning and really mount a lead for Carlos Rodon, but. Uh, Cole Reagans is really going to uh, have some impressive at-bats. Two cutters, uh, a swing and a miss by Aaron Judge, I think, low and inside, uh, kind of acting as that slider, harder slider. And then he's going to blow a middle, middle fastball by Aaron Judge, 98 miles an hour to this point. Aaron Judge uh, in the first game, 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. And then after that, 0 for 4 with five strikeouts. So uh, Judge not being the MVP and historic player that obviously we know. He's really had some struggles in the playoffs uh, statistically. But Austin Wells, after that with one away, he is going to uh, get a strikeout looking on a middle, middle slider. Really not a good at bat. It was actually uh, – Austin Wells had two uh, strikeouts looking in this game. And then uh, with Giancarlo Stan coming up with two outs, uh, he's going to get jammed completely. He's broken bat, uh, completely sawed off. And it's going to be a routine play for Michael Massey. So Cole Reagan's just like that. First and second to Aaron Judge. Uh, to Aaron Judge, Austin Wells, and Giancarlo Stan is easily going to be able to get out of that jam, striking out Judge and Wells and then getting Stan to ground out. So uh, Cole Reagan's an impressive bounce back. And to be able to compose and, and make really important pitches uh, in an electric Yankee Stadium crowd. So we take it to the bottom of the third inning. And Glaber Torres, once again, is going to work a walk. Glaber Torres continues to stay hot. Really has been the Yankees' best hitter. Is that crazy? He's been the best hitter since, like, September. Like, Glaber Torres has been going crazy, man. Had a, had a really good September. Um, and then Juan Soto uh, is going to get stared down by Cole Reagans after, uh, I think it was a strikeout looking, if I'm not mistaken. I have it as a, a forward K, but um, I, I do remember Soto potentially looking, um, uh, getting a strikeout looking, but... 
Cole Reagan's really excited after that strikeout. And then Aaron Judge um, is, is just going to miss, is just going to miss a home run, a lower middle slider. Judge really looked like he uh, got it, but just to slight bit under it, um, I, I don't know who is in right field. They they switched Tommy Pham. I think it would have been Hunter Renfro in right field. Um, is going to go back on it and be able to make the catch uh, on the warning track in the short porch. And then Austin Wells following that is going to put a really good swing after that really bad at bat, frustrating at bat with a runner on second base. Austin Wells, a flat 95 mile an hour fastball at the top of the zone, a really good clean swing, taking that fastball the other way from Austin Wells. And we're going to see uh, Glaber Torres. I said Glaber Torres was at second base. He was at first base. Austin Wells with that single. Now we have first and second, two away. And then Giancarlo Stanton is going to extend his hands on a changeup, low it away, and line one to Bobby Witt Jr. that eats him up. A really tough play for Bobby Witt Jr. Hit really hard by Giancarlo Stanton. It's going to eat him up, go a little bit past him. And Glaber Torres with really good base running with two out. Immediately I'm on the move, and he's going to be able to score from second base on that play. So the Yankees take a one to nothing lead against at this point, Carlos Rodon really shoving and really pitching very good dominating versus the Kansas City Royals lineup. But in the top of the fourth inning, the Kansas City Royals are going to immediately respond. I think with a lead off home run by Salvador Perez, a middle, middle slider. We watched this on the Yum Cam, which I love to watching. Um, I love watching any time they show the Yum Cam. I wish I could watch an entire game on the Yum Cam, but a middle, middle slider. Salvador Perez has really good numbers versus Carlos Rodon career wise. And he really, uh, a whoops one he it earlier on in the season I think in, in middle September Salvador Perez had a massive series versus the Yankees and he continues his uh, dominance in Yankee Stadium Tommy Pham following that the Royals are going to continue to get base runners he's going to line an RBI single on a middle middle slider and then Garrett Hampson continues the rally for the Kansas City Royals on another middle middle slider Garrett Hampson lines it into left field Tommy Pham scoring moves the the score to three to one Kansas City the Yankees are going to put in Ian Hamilton and Michael Garcia another RBI single for the Royals the Royals playing small ball singles machine similar to the New York Mets the New York Mets this entire postseason have uh, scored all of their runs on on singles and then the occasional home run from Mark Vientos from Brandon Nimmo from Pete Alonso with massive home runs game changing and lead changing home runs but the Kansas City Royals, really good at bats um, and bad pitches from Carlos Rodon. Bad pitches, really bad pitches on that slider. His fastball changeup combo was so dominant in this game. And, and I, I was just disappointed to see Rodon not uh, go to those pitches in important situations. And the Royals really took advantage. Garrett Hampton had really good at bats. Um, and same thing with Tommy Pham and Michael Garcia had a day. I think he ended up going four for five. Uh, with a lot of hard hit balls. So we take it to the top of the sixth inning, four to one Kansas City Royals. Um, and and, and uh, Tim Hill is going to come into the game uh, for the Yankees. And I think it was a first and third one out situation. The Royals really looking to uh, really take the lead and end this game, making a more comfortable game. And John Birdie is going to get a liner from MJ Melendez, really hit that ball hard. Uh, I think it was a first pitch. Similar, uh, MJ Melendez actually had a, a similar play in the Orioles series. Uh, he's lines one to John Birdie. John Birdie catches it, and he steps on first base. The last one with Ryan Mountcastle turning that double play. I think with bases loaded in that Orioles series. But this time, John Birdie is going to catch it, step on first base for a really big double play to get out of that jam to hold the lead at 4-1. to one. We take it to the bottom of the eighth inning, and the Yankees, Let's rally here, baby. Judge starts the eighth inning off with an infield single. Judge, his first hit of the series. It's an infield single, but he beats it out. Hits that ball hard to Michael Garcia. Now we got Austin Wells, who once again is going to be caught looking. I, I don't remember what this pitch was. It was a middle-middle fastball uh, uh, last time. I, I think, no, this was a sinker. Kurz Bubich, honestly, a really good pitch. 95 on hour sinker, uh, catches the outer half. But Austin Wells got to be more aggressive. It really looked like, uh, just from watching the game it just didn't look like Austin Wells was even trying to swing sometimes uh, at least for like I, I just always fucking I always relate when I'm watching baseball like what I'm thinking in the box as a hitter and, and there's just times where like I, I, I tend not to be aggressive and I'm like even in the two strike count like I'm like trying to work a walk rather than just be like swing 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 I'm trying to swing I'm trying to drive the ball and then if I see a ball then I'm taking rather than uh having the mindset of, of just like taking until you're swinging. And I felt like Austin Wells was just trying to take. And he had two, again, strikeouts looking in this game. We take it uh, to Giancarlo Stan, 
and he is going to ground into a routine double play to end that rally. Just really took all the all the air out of the Yankees crowd. Just felt like that was their opportunity. Uh, Austin Wells strikeout looking. Giancarlo Stan grounds into a double play. Chris Bubish, shout out to him, a, a lefty killer in Giancarlo Stan. Uh, that he gets the really big double play. The 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 Royals bullpen was really good in this game. Really, really good. Uh, Lucas Eckrig ended up closing it out. Jazz Chisholm hit a bomb, but uh, Eckrig really dominant in the back end. Chris Bubich looked good. Angel Zerpa uh, came into this game earlier on. And also John Schreiber. Yeah, John Schreiber had a pretty good appearance as well. Um, so the Royals, they get a, a game two win. Looked really good. The Yankees did not look good at all. And this should be a competitive series. I mean, the Royals are a really good team. I've liked the Royals. I think the Yankees have an objectively better team. But the Royals, uh, I, I, I don't see any reason if the Yankees continue to play like this and their lineup, specifically Aaron Judge um, and, and and Juan Soto and Giancarlo said, if they're not hitting like they can, the Royals can very easily win this series. They have incredible starting pitching. And their lineup with Michael Garcia, if he's hitting like this, uh, even though Bobby Witt Jr. has had a, a horrific series, uh, Salvador Perez, Vinny Pascantino, still a really great player. Yuli Gurriel, Tommy Pham. Like, I really love, I've always loved this Royals team. I think they're honestly built for the postseason. Um, but we'll see how this series unfolds. I'm excited to see game number three with Seth Lugo and Clark Schmidt on the mound going back to Kansas City. Should be exciting to see postseason baseball in Kansas City for the first time since... Well, what is it, like 2017, 2016-ish? Like, they haven't been in a while, man. The Royals have been bad for a while. So it's going to be exciting to see postseason baseball back in KC. So I appreciate you so much for watching. Have a great day. Um, I'm going to go to bed. I'm very tired. I'm, I'm a little bit sick. So hopefully, if you made it this far, I appreciate you so much. I'm sorry for sounding a little bit stuffy throughout the video. Tyler's ready for bed, as you can see. He's uh, just sleeping through my yapping. So have a great day. I'll see you guys tomorrow.